Amen. Rise up with me, children. Children of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless your word today. Bless uh, everyone who has gathered here today. Lord God, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit fall on this place, Lord God. And bless this meeting, Lord God, and bless your children today, Lord God. We ask you to bless the tithes and offerings. For it's in Jesus' name, his church said amen. amen and amen. Let's applaud the Lord together. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say you're in at your mama's church. Hallelujah. Um, so in our, in our message, Living with Purpose, um, I want to read to you something I read to the the 9 o'clock service, and uh, I, I hope that you'll be blessed by it. We're going to start out in Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 17. And uh, I want you just to hold on here for a second. It says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the, what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So in this living with a purpose, as, as I look at this, as I look at the scripture, the Lord tells me to be filled with this Holy Spirit. This is this is a command that the Lord wants me to follow. See, uh, there's there's more to the Bible than just the Ten Commandments. All the scripture in here is a commandment. Amen. All these are commandments. These aren't suggestions. God didn't just hand you a book of suggestions. He 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 gave you a book uh, for a way to. He he gave you a book so you understand how to do life. And and when you get to a sticking point in life, he'll show you how to get through it. When you get when you get to a nasty point in life, he'll show you how to grow go through it. He'll show you how to walk through fire, walk through hardships, walk through sorrow, walk through discontent, walk through craziness, walk through all that, but come out the other side because the Lord wants it that way. Somebody say amen. Hey, listen, Timmy. It don't matter what the enemy says. God's got the last word. Amen. My God can do this thing. And uh, and he wants you to be filled with his Holy Spirit. So as we look at living with a purpose, we're going to pick up <clears throat> and, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, if you would, with me. And uh, and uh, Pastor Ron preached for me last night, and I thank so much for him to do that. Um, it will fail and end here at Westport. <clears throat> in, the, in the points that Brother Ron made in his message where – were, were, was basically a three-point uh, sermon, if you will, and, and it spoke on the, the power of the Lord and His Holy Spirit, the proclamation that we need to make, and, and the praise here at the end. So I'm going to pick up here in the book of Acts in about midway in the second chapter, um, and we'll, we'll go through and we'll, we'll talk about this living with purpose, that I, I, I really am here. I really am on an assignment. My life really does need to make sense. And and it really does it really does need to influence the people that are around me, Amen. So today I got a circle of influence. You guys showed up, and you guys you guys got a gang that you're working with today. And and maybe as we leave today, uh, you know we have we have some things going on here at our church. We got our new members class for those who have taken our new membership. I want to invite you to the dinner at two o'clock, and we want to applaud all those who are went to our new <coughs> members class. And then, and then we're doing uh, shortly thereafter. We're doing a, a funeral here for uh, Linda Steiger, who was one of our members, uh, Greg and Anna Steiger's uh, sister, and uh, that'll be t- uh, today. Um, so we have a we we do live with a purpose, and I'll be talking about that in our funeral. Actually, I'll be talking about a homecoming. It's going to be a homecoming service, is what it's going to be about, because Linda is is finally home to be with the Lord. And uh, and basically that that'll be my message to you today, as most of them are. Um, so in in the in the book of Acts in the second chapter, let's pick up the story, kind of where I left off, 
Um, and let's go to Acts 2, verse 17, if you will. It says, in the last days, and we'll chop this up as we go. In the last days, it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, let me tell you this about the last days of the church age. That's the age that we're living in right now. So if anybody is asking you about the age we're living in in Bible times, we're living in the New Testament or the church age. Amen? It's, it's, it's not really, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's for you to understand that God is writing this book to you. So, so take it personal today. So in the last days, it shall be God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young, uh, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I talked about this just a little bit. I'm not going to stay here very long, but it's a quick, short recap. Now, notice this. If I was to, to turn back and, and watch this prophecy from, from Joel in chapter 2, you'll find out that this, this prophecy is fulfilled in the sense that God has, has fulfilled this promise but this is not this is not it. This this fulfilling and this pouring out will be continual for everyone who calls on the Lord for this filling or this raining down of the Holy Spirit. Because we find out in daily life we have got to be filled with God's holy presence daily, or we would never make it. Amen. We need hold on, who am I talking to that needs the daily filling of God's Holy Spirit in their lives, Amen. So this, and and I and I and I want to I want to continue on here because I don't want you to think that you're not part of God's church when you've decided to call on the name of the Lord. You are part of God's church, and 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 as His and His Holy Spirit or our Holy Ghost is is poured out on you. That's the power that generates in. Let me do it over here. That's, that's the power that's going through you to do the things that God has called you to do. That's what the book of Acts is all about, is action. Amen. It's, it's about getting out there and getting it done through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. So here it goes. It starts taking off. He says, even on my male servants and female servants in those days. So he says it again. And if you just count it, this is continual. God doesn't quit on you. God doesn't quit on you. Who am I talking to now? He hasn't quit on you. He hasn't stopped. He, he, didn't, he didn't get out and give me a sub or a substitute. I'm tired, coach. Can I talk to you for a second? Well, I, I've been in Joplin for four days with, with, with hundreds of screaming teenagers. It, watch me now. Watch me. It, and, and they're wonderful, and, 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 and most of them are born-again Christians, and and we were had a great time and everything. They get tired when you know I I I, I uh, coach a, a girls soccer team and and this is my first year of coaching girls soccer team and uh, amen so amen. Hey, uh, amen. And you guys are gonna have to help me along. So imagine the pastor that's never coached girls soccer. I've coached a lot of boys stuff. I'm good with coaching boys, but the girls. Uh, it's a different gender. <laughs> and they have they have needs that I know nothing about. Still ain't figured that out in 50 years of living. But here's the deal. They get tired, and it's my job and, 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 and Coach Lyons' job to substitute someone in that is fresh so we can continue on in this game. Amen. <clears throat> you don't have to do that with God. You don't ever get tired of hearing your mess. He's there ready to refresh you and replenish you with the power in the movement of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen for a minute. So he says, and, and here's the cool thing about this because I want to make sure it's not an exclusive club. So it says, even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I'll pour out my spirit. So he says, it doesn't matter your social status, whether you work at McDonald's, you're a janitor, whether you're a, you run a company or you're a CEO of the biggest company. He, God, there, there's no respecter of persons in God's kingdom. He doesn't, he doesn't look at your W-2 and think that you're whatever, you know. <laughs> well, I better pour a little more out on him. Actually, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. But you guys aren't ready for that. Listen, 
he pours out on his feet. Usually the, the, the lowliest, the lowliest of people are the one who serve God the most. Because, and you can read about that in the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount, greatest message ever preached. And in Matthew 5, you find out the, the blessed are those who are... You guys aren't ready for this. I'll give it to you anyways. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. They don't come with a haughty attitude. They know their spiritual condition is broken, wretched, and naked. And he says, blessed will you when you recognize your spiritual condition. I will bless you. The one sin that God can't deal with is pride. Just in, in, Don't let me wreck your theology. He, he won't deal with pride. If you're too prideful to come to God, that's where, you'll, that's where you'll stay and that's where you'll die is in your pride and in your sin. If you're too, if you're too prideful to know that you need Jesus, he'll leave you right where you're at because that's a decision that you made, not him. Come on, church, let's go now. I'm to, Listen. Listen to this, and, and none of you guys or your, your family members have these issues, but take this message out to some people that you, you may know, and it says, and I will show wonders in heavens and signs on the earth and below, uh, earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Okay, so let's slide down here um, to 21. So it says, and it shall come to pass, this, this means this has come to pass, and it and is still happening, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Factual. Factual. Promise you this, Smokey. Nobody will be saved unless they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. That there's somebody bigger, somebody more important, somebody more prominent, somebody's got more answers, somebody's got more power. And if you don't confess, you will not be saved. You can't get in there on your own merit. You have to confess and understand your spiritual condition. And when you do, you'll repent of it and turn towards God, turn towards goodness and leave the evil behind. You said, Pastor, is it that simple? And I say, yes, it is. That's all I'm going to tell you. And hold on to the end of the message. I'll bring this back around. Because if you've never felt like shouting, if you've never felt like jumping, if you've never felt like rejoicing, raising your hands, everything, I got, I got a special ingredient for you today before you leave church. Amen? Wouldn't you like to just feel like that? I mean, just do it anyways. Just, just feel like it anyways, and you could have had the, the worst day of your life. But today is a new day. God's mercies are fresh and new this morning. It's like fresh baked bread or fresh Doritos. It's just like, well, it's great. You ever just pop a bag open and just like, ah, who am I talking to now? Ugh. Ugh. Amen? It's better than that is what I'm trying to get to. Here it is. I don't know if this makes any theological sense when you throw Doritos in, but it is funny. Watch this. Here it is. <laughs> Men of Israel, verse 22, <laughs> Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that your God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the def, uh, uh, definite plan and foreknowledge of God. So, so here's, here's the thing right here, foreknowledge of God. I'm confused about this foreknowledge of God. Here's the deal. God is sovereign. He knows all things. <laughs> Where's the amen section that understands this? Right here. here. Watch this. God is sovereign. That means absolute and just. He knows everything that you're going to do for the rest of your life. That can't even be. He knows when you're going to screw up. He knows when you're going to do good. He knows when you cut the grass, and he knows when you don't want to cut it. Amen? And some of your grass is pretty tall. I drove by your house. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Here we go. He says, you crucified, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death. Because it was not possible for him to be held by it. So he loosened up with this death, spiritually and physically, that, 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 that sin and death and things can't bind me anymore. It, is anybody just get tired of getting bound by everything, everywhere you turn around? I mean, it's like I'm bound by this, I'm bound by that, I'm bound what to say. And sometimes you, you just, when you're in Jesus, you're not bound by all this mess anymore. 
There's freedom in Jesus. And, and, and quite frankly, some people are afraid to come to Jesus because they think that Jesus is going to really kind of just mess up their world. No, actually, Jesus is coming to fix the mess in your world. He ain't coming to mess your world up. He's coming to fix the mess in your world. And if you've been delivered, say amen. But he is an inconvenience. He gets in the way of, of NASCAR and football and baseball and, and all that. But that's what he does. Jesus comes in and gets in the way to show you a new way to follow him. Amen. So, so I'm living with a purpose, and I'm bringing this back. I'm living with a purpose. I am here for a reason. It's not happenstance and all that. Amen. So here we go, picking up a little speed. It says it was not possible for him to be held by it, so death couldn't hold him. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. For he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. Watch this. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known for me the path of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Oh, this Hades and this hell thing, man, this is really getting to be a bummer. Did Jesus really go? Did he not go? I know as the story goes on, if I, that he's a Hades and didn't abandon me. And, what, and I'll address this here in just a second. Be thinking about this as, as the story goes on. Everybody's going, he's going to address it. He's going to address it. I'm going to address it. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us this day. So they're saying we, we know this isn't about David. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God was sworn with an oath to him that he would set the one of his descendants on a throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ. We know that happened, that he was not abandoned to Hades. So he he didn't go to Hades. He was resurrected to his father, nor did his flesh see corruption. That means he didn't rot in the grave. His whole body ascended to the Lord. Amen. We know that. That's factual. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Now, this is Peter speaking to everybody there. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God. That's where I know Jesus resides right now, is at the right hand of God. Because if I don't believe that, that messes up the whole trinity. He resides right there. That only leaves one person left. That's the Holy Spirit. Remember, you're not going to see him at Quick Trip today. Don't call me back with that sighting. You know, every once in a while somebody calls, I seen Jesus today. Uh, No, you didn't. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) Oh, God. I don't know, something super spiritual people do. But what they do see, if the Holy Ghost fills, is they do see visions. So here it goes. Exalted the right hand of God and receiving from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. And watch this. He has poured out on this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. It, this, this, this pouring out, he, he talks about it all through this chapter, and it, and it never ends. i never seen in the book of Acts anywhere where the Holy Spirit and the pouring out stopped. I didn't see in the last chapter. He goes, well, we stopped pouring out the Holy Spirit. All the rest of you guys are going to hell. I didn't see that, and don't let anybody ever preach that to you. The Holy Spirit is active. Amen? The Holy Spirit gives you power. The Holy Spirit makes you bold. The Holy Spirit makes you live with purpose. The Holy Spirit makes you love people you could never love. The Holy Spirit gives me boldness and pride in Jesus, amen, that I never had before. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Hey, hey, hey. 
And, you know, I was thinking about these gifts, you know, and the gifts of tongues, laying on of hands, all this stuff as we go through. And, uh, and I was pondering this with this, with this tongue, this tongue thing. And, and God says, he says, it's not, he says, it's not the hearer that I anoint. It's the language that I anoint. I bless the language that comes out of the mouth so they can hear me. Think about that for just a second. He blesses the language that comes out so the hearers can be blessed by it. It's, it's, so you, it's a heavenly language that speaks to heavenly people who are listening. Amen? Don't, don't get freaked out about it. It's in the Bible. We'll have to deal with it. Now listen, as it goes on, listen, it gets better and better. So the Spirit is poured out. He says, for David did not ascend into the heavens, but himself, the Lord said to the Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's where God will rest his feet is on the head of Muhammad, the head of Allah, the the head of Buddha, the head of everybody. That's his footstool. When he sits down and props up, these gods are under his feet. Let all the house of Israel, therefore, know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Listen to this. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. That means, listen, here's what I'm saying. They were cut to the heart. That means God came in and touched their heart. Came in and and touched their heart and something happened. When God touches your heart and you respond, something supernaturally happens to you. And if you say, I have never been touched in that way. Hold on. I've never been touched in that way. I've never wanted to jump or shout or sing or or dance or tell people about the love of Jesus. And I want you to close your eyes just for a second. Then I'll ask you to open them again. So if, if, if God was, if we really believe in this, in this wonderful, all-powerful God, and, and, if he, and if he can come down and touch lives right where you're at, we know that there's got to be a supernatural response. And you say, you know what, I've never responded in that way. I've never, I've never just, I never felt this movement of the Holy Spirit. Then what I ask you today to do is this. Set aside all your pretension. Take the nameplate off the church that you attended. And just let God and the power of his Holy Spirit move in your life. Whatever it is that you, that you thought you knew about theology or religion, put all that aside. That has nothing to do with what I'm getting ready to say. And the nameplate off the door and everything. And just let God come into the sanctuary of your heart. And here's the message that Peter preaches. In verse 237, he says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And it says, And you will receive. What will you receive? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, hold on for a second. I'm not done. You will receive. So today, everybody sitting here, nobody moving. I either will receive this gift or not. And according to the word of God, I receive this gift upon believing in Jesus Christ. I'm turning from my evil ways and I'm turning towards the Lord. I don't know anything about Jesus. I don't know anything about the cross. I don't know anything about the Bible. All I know is today there is a void in my life. And it may be the movement of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you thought it was a one-time thing, and then that's it, and I'm good, and this, that, and the other. Yes, you have, you have so, watch this now, you have sonship, and you were adopted through the power of the Holy Spirit. You have sonship. You were, you were born into the kingdom of God, and you were sealed according to Ephesians chapter 1. But this, this, this daily infilling of the Holy Spirit is something that's continual. You've already heard me talk about it. Three times in one chapter, this this infilling of the Holy Spirit is something that is continual and has been going on for thousands of years. But it's only available for those who call on the name of the Lord. Lord, today I need you to 
I need you to just wash over me the power of your Holy Spirit and let it move my life so I can start living with purpose and that I understand your scripture and I understand my place in this Christian community so I can do your work and I can love on people and, 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 and I can have joy in my life and I can raise my hands and I can shout and I can move and I don't care what anybody thinks anymore and I'm so tired of my life that I'm ready for a new life and I'm ready for you to do a new work in my life, Lord God, and I want you to touch my life and I am so sick and tired of doing the same thing over and over and I need you to touch me now. I just, I, I don't want anybody to, to fix me anymore. I'm tired of it. And I don't want God to do it now. Watch it. Back aches, headaches. People, God can heal every one of them. We have become a society that has bathed in prescription medicine. There's nothing wrong with it, and I think there's a place for it. But it doesn't mean that God can't, that doesn't mean that's your lot for life. It doesn't mean that that's your lot for life. God can heal you at any time. But you'll have to turn it over to him. And I want you to stand right where you're at. We're not done yet, but I want you to stand for just a second. Stand with me, please. And I want you to listen to this. And he says, that, he says save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received, listen to this. It says, listen to what he says. He says, so those who received his word were baptized and there were and there were added that day 3000 souls well, hold on how did 3000 souls get born again and, and baptized in the holy ghost here it is here's the ingredient watch and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayer and all ca- They didn't come in with two agendas in the church. One agenda. They didn't they didn't come in to know something more than the next guy or the next girl. That that doesn't work in church. They come in under one accord and know that the only true baptism that changes lives <clears throat> is a baptized the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the only one that makes the true transformation and, and, and definition in your life. Yes, there's water baptism, and, and, th- and that's a symbol of you making a public profession that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that's important as well. But what makes the transformation in your life is the movement and the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing else, no, I can't preach anything other than that to change a life. Nothing else will do. I can dunk you in this tub back here a thousand times, and it won't change your life, I promise you. But when the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes over you. Oh, church, hold on. I'm not done yet. Here's what happens. Verse 43. And all came upon every soul. Every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Here it is, last one. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. So here's, 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 my, here's my question to you today. Close your eyes. Let me pray for you. The workings of the early church. They were all together in one accord. And it could be argued how many were with the apostles. How many were the apostles? 120 the first time. And then after this, 3,000 were you know, and then the church goes after that, and you know the story. What you've got to do today is, is make this gospel that we meet about, preach about, celebrate about, part of your life today. And you say, I would love for the awe to come on me, this, this movement, this, this filling. And let me tell you something, it ain't just for pastors. <laughs> Who am I talking to? He didn't give me an exclusive club where I got all of the Holy Ghost, that, that, that there's no more to go around. There's enough to go around for everybody who calls on the name of the Lord. And it's for your children and for all who are far off. Now, as I invite the, the praise team to come back up here, I want to challenge you to this today. If you've never had wonders, 
all? If you've never been cut to the heart, as the scripture said? If you've never been moved by the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to tell you a personal experience that it's dynamic is an understatement. It's, it, I could sit here and most know my testimony. But when the, just like the song says, when he touched me, church, when he touched me, I want somebody to confess today and raise their hand. When he touched you, something changed in your heart. Just, oh, say, I remember the day. You just raise your hand and you just say, just say, I remember the day. Oh, that he touched me. That means you were cut to the heart. Something happened that he came in and he took that old, stony, crusty heart because you gave it up and he took it out. And he's been evaluating you for a long time. He says, that heart will no longer do. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to give you a, a, a fresh heart. One that is ready for eternity. With all the technology that we have, dear friends, <laughs> we can do surgery, heart surgery on babies and it's a wonderful thing. But no doctor in the world except the doctor can change the heart that is ready to face eternity. So I ask you today, dear friends, have you invited Jesus into your life to be your Lord and to be your Savior? And if your answer is, I think so, that's not going to get it. You have to know for sure that you've trusted Jesus. So all those who need to be moved by the power and the might of Jesus today, come forward before we partake in the Lord's Supper and let him baptize you with his Holy Spirit. Let him touch your life. This is something only that God can do. Just say, Lord God, today I need a fresh filling and I, I'm a born-again believer and I need you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need, to, I, need a, I need a fresh anointing. I need a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit today. I'm asking you, Father God, to, to rain down a fresh anointing in my life. And, and don't find it strange because I ask God every time before I come out here to preach to give me something fresh because his children don't need stale bread. They need fresh fire and fresh wind. And maybe if you've been a little stagnant and you need some wind in your sails, oh, what a joy it is to have the fresh anointing of God to rain down on you so you know for sure that you're living with a purpose. Or it's in Jesus' name.